So, Sean, thank you very much for um, spending a, a few more moments with us after having uh, given us a, a great inspirational insight in uh, your strategic um, alignment of processes at Northeastern uh, University, which we understood has really a, a tremendous success over the last years. Um, and from your experience and perspective, especially looking at your institutional uh, processes, what do you uh, describe as the, the key um, challenges as well as maybe the key driving factors that uh, brought your institution into such a, a good uh, perspective? Mm. Well, I think uh, all institutions obviously have to react to the marketplace. And uh, there are certain trends that there's just no avoiding. There's, there's opportunities and there's risks with them. Online education, changes in financing, uh, demands on employability, uh, globalization, they're all impacting universities in some way versus how things were decades ago. So uh, change processes or new programs, new strategies are, of course, reactions to that and uh, responses to it. Historically, colleges and universities haven't been um, especially responsive to the outside world in terms of their, their governance and so on. And um, I think there's a chance for universities and governments that uh, dictate where universities focus and set up the architecture uh, to be much more nimble and to be more innovative and to engage the community and have a broader impact uh, by, by doing things in new ways. And um, one thing I understood is that you had a, a very strong focus um, to align also with corporates. Um, what is um, the idea behind that and, and what actually makes it uh, interesting for them to collaborate with you to such an extent? Sure, well, uh, corporations of course are very interested in uh, talent and uh, university educated talent. The demand for graduates with degrees in the US and worldwide is, is growing. Uh, when you look at the data, despite a lot of the conversation that claims that university degrees are valued less. And so you're really meeting the needs of industry. And the fundamental premise is that uh, the idea that we have vocational and practical education uh, and the liberal arts and higher levels of learning, research university level learning, uh, that, that's a false dichotomy. Right? You, can, you can have applied, reflective education, and that's our model is experiential learning. It involves practice and feedback. And we even do that at the doctoral level so that you don't graduate with purely a, a PhD in some of the new programs we're building, uh, but you are embedded within a company doing your research and having an effect, which is really where we focused at the, the undergraduate level and the graduate level. So it's a uh, feedback I'm trying to think of a, an ideal word, um, an interplay between the experience in the world of work and coming back into the classroom and reflecting and applying what you've learned and then going back out and applying it in the workplace. And we also think about all of that as a lifelong learning continuum, right? It's not just four or five years or two years for a graduate program, but the reality of uh, working and learning today is that people will be coming into university and exiting and coming back over the course of their career. And then um, just uh, referring to um, how we initially got to know each other, um, the, the trends behind, let's say, in the, in the whole um, system uh, in terms of uh, how is this process, which is maybe more continuous, um, uh, in, in uh, like, credentialized, let's say, how is this uh, uh, facilitated um, between institutions? What, um, and maybe also we, we talked about the uh, roles of platforms and intermediaries. Um, how do you see this um, scenery changing and what is maybe the perspective of uh, institutions uh, in the future in that regard? Well, it's a much more complicated ecosystem where there's overlap and competition between universities and non-institutional providers like technology firms, uh, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and many other examples. But a lot of those firms are also partnering with universities. So there's a, a complementary nature between some of these industry-based credentials that there's demand for in the employment market and what universities offer. So universities, you can get a course, you can get a certificate, you can get a degree. 
but now universities are moving into offering new types of credentials. Very often they're, they're technically known as uh, certificates. Even if they have another name or another package, another term that's used, uh, when, when you look, it's actually a certificate. And even looking to the past, certificates can mean many different things and they've been around for a long time. You can get a certificate for a one-day course or a short online experience or for a six-month course that was assessed for credit and it's all called certificates. The, the universities, I think, um, are winning in the market, especially those that have a, a strong brand uh, because that's really what employers and most students and professionals value is the reputation and the imprimatur and the quality assurance that comes with something offered by a university. And that's where there's the opportunity for partnership with some of these outside firms is that uh, ideally a professional, a student, whatever term we want to use, uh, they don't want only a certificate or certification from a company. When you can bundle that with something from a university as well, uh, the, the student wins and also the university wins. Last question. Uh, we are from Germany. We are going uh, back soon. Uh, what would be your um, recommendation for us to take home uh, with us to maybe inspire uh, processes in, in the German higher ed institution? Mm. Well, I guess we, we have a unique higher education market here in the United States. It's really based on there's more private institutions. There's a lot of competition. It's sort of an open market in terms of you know tuition pricing and, and whatnot, uh, and you know that that diversification and competition I think has been a strength historically. Um, it, it prompts uh, the need to innovate and the need to understand what your peers are doing. But of course, we're also very collaborative uh, here where you're visiting in, in the Boston area. We have 80 colleges and universities uh, just within a, a 40 kilometer radius of downtown Boston, and so that creates an environment where you can learn from what other institutions are doing and the exchange of best practices, which I think this, this gathering is about, is, is very important. Uh, benchmarking, you know, especially related to new credentials, it's, it's the Wild West. It's a new environment. Uh, there aren't standards. There aren't international standards. We don't have national standards in the United States. And so it's more important than ever for colleges and universities to get together and uh, compare perspectives and kind of set a standard uh, for the future. Looking forward to continue the discussion on that end as well as on the other things you mentioned. So thank you very much for um, being with us and looking forward to stay in touch. Sure, happy, happy to do it.